Good morning people, hello and welcome to another vlog episode of the India Darshan Travel Series. So right now I'm at my hotel, Sun Hill Portico, that's the courtyard, that's the road up front. It gets really busy at night. Um, so we're gonna go down, have some breakfast and then go to the reception and ask for some tips and suggestions about places we could explore. And I also saw there are a couple of uh, bike and scooty rental shops nearby so we're gonna go get ourselves a scooty rental for a couple of days so we can go around. There are a couple of different things 50-60 kilometers from here but because these are the hilly roads so probably around like 2-3 hours uh, ride one way. So it's pretty convenient that way. So let's get started. Let's go down get some energy going uh, have some nice buffet breakfast and then we'll be on our way to explore town and nearby areas. Got some uh, nice suggestions. The breakfast is really cool. I really, really love the staff out here. They are very courteous and polite. So that's really making the experience definitely worth it, even if this is on the premium side. So they mentioned that I could go to Mirex today and rent a scooty from nearby. So they gave me a reference for one of the shops. Um, let's go there and find out what the rentals are. And after breakfast, some of the staff came up to me and they wanted to take selfies and stuff. So I had a mini celebrity moment. That was really cool. So if you guys are still watching this vlog, thanks so much. Really enjoyed uh, breakfast and your services were amazing. Okay, let's go grab ourselves a uh, scooty and then we'll be on our way for a mini road trip. Um, I guess it's pretty close by and you can easily do it in a day trip. So let's figure out where that is. So found this shop, it's called Silly Bully Bike Rental. It's just along the straight road where the hotel was, so it was a bit convenient to get here. It took me like 7-8 minutes to get here. But the shop is a little closed right now, so I called the owner. He said to wait for like 5-10 minutes and he's coming down. And then we can see if they have any uh, modern scooties to rent for a couple of days. So it seems like the per day rental here is about 800 rupees and a 2000 rupees deposit. And then some shops they have a minimum duration, so like this shop had a minimum duration of 3 days for rentals. Um, I spoke to a couple other shops, they were also quoting 700 or so. There's one more shop that I want to walk to and try and see the quality of scooty that they're giving and their rentals. And if it makes sense, probably gonna grab it from there and leave. So, let's see, it's called the Hill Rider, it's also a 10 minute walk, it's also close to the hotel. Let's see what their rates are and the quality of service. Alright, so spoke to the owner of the hill rider, gonna get there very shortly. There was a slight hiccup, actually the location has changed. So this is the Dada Bhai Sporting Club and it's 3 minutes walk from here. So I'll put the new location in the description below so you don't end up with the same issue because Google Maps hasn't updated their location yet. The phone number is still the same, the location has changed. So it's a little bit further away, like 3.5 kilometers away from the hotel. So I took the wide city taxi and uh, use that for like 15-20 rupees to get here, short ride and then we're gonna go get our um, scooty from here they said they're gonna give me a new one it's like just 5-6 months old so that should be good let's go walk and the rental was like 700 rupees per day and the deposit and then uh, some charges for the paperwork so let's see how much we end up paying here and they gave me a discount for the paperwork because I'm taking it for a bunch of days together so that's a good deal let's see so I guess we should just walk straight into that lane turn left and then in three minutes we'll be there also learning something new about the public transport system here so Toto is considered as a private ride out here so if you're a solo traveler you book a Toto they charge you for the entire thing so the same journey with the Toto would have costed me 100 rupees 
with the city taxi actually was supposed to be 15 but he charged me 20 I was like okay fine can't haggle for 5 rupees can't be bothered it's interesting how I'm just like 3, 3 and a half kilometers away from the downtown and here is much cooler there is like super congested crowded and very very hot and humid and also next to the hotel I went out for a walk last night I saw the Hong Kong market and Bidhan market not super interesting if you're a tourist because there's unless you want to go shopping for some jewelry or clothes or something or fruits and vegetables but other than that i didn't find much and then then also if you're a tourist you'd have to start haggling so um didn't go there this morning i just wanted to grab a scooty and then go out for a ride instead to merit and enjoy the nice cool breeze and views of the hills Alright, so all sorted with the rental paperwork, got this yellow end of about 5-6 months old. Um, so had to pay 700 rupees per day as rent, 100 or rupees for the paperwork and then 2000 rupees security deposit refundable once I return it. And the shop works from 8am to 8pm so I have until 8pm on the third day to return it. So that should be okay. So the plan is to go to Mirik today and then we're going to explore Dazzling and Yopai areas using the same scooty. We're going to keep going around and because now we have our own vehicle, we don't have to rush around and we're going to find the hotels in Darjeeling on the way. So first we have to refuel it and then we'll be on our way. So let's go find ourselves a gas station and hit the road. Stopped at a grocery store a while ago uh, to get some water, met a couple of locals there. Some of them had even seen my vlog before so that was a cool experience. And they gave me some tips on some offbeat places I could check out which was interesting. And they also found out that here you could even rent a car from these uh, scooty and bike rental shops. And there are also dedicated 6-7 shops around town in Siliguri that also offer car rentals at I think 2000 rupees a day plus deposit or something like that. Um, the longer you rent it for, they give you some discount on the per day prices as well. And we are almost kind of retracing the path back to Bagdogra. So this is the railway line that brings you to Siliguri NJP area. And I just saw a train pass here, so just stop by here real quick. There's heavy water flowing down there, the railway tracks. And there was a guy at the bike rental shop who gave me some tips about, you know, not going to Sikkim side. It's August right now and if you're planning to go to Sikkim, please don't. It's peak monsoon season, heavy landslides and the roads are very risky to ride right now. And most of them are closed anyway. So it's better not to go all the way there. Darjeeling is as far as up north of Bengal as I'm trying to go and after that I'll plan something else. So anyway, let's continue the ride. And they also told me some offbeat locations close to the Bagdogra airport. I'll see if I can trace the path that I was told. Uh, if not anyway, Mirik is the destination for today. And everybody says like two odd hours are more than enough for Mirik. You go to the lake first and then a couple of temples around, eat something and come back to town. So nice and easy. So let's keep going. And uh, there should be some tea estates up ahead where the weather should turn much nicer. Here already starting to cool off a little bit. So that's really cool. Let's go. Suddenly the entire scenery changed. There is some military area around as well, but it's like lush greenery, cows grazing. There are mountains behind as well. There's uh, because of the vegetation, can't really see it. But the views are also quite nice. And one more thing that I figured while talking to the locals out here is that um, in the main market in Siliguri, you have these uh, sharing cabs that bring you all the way to Gangtok or Darjeeling or most of the bigger towns. The problem with taking that with that is that is budget friendly, all right. The thing is, uh, to return you have to start your journey around 4 4:30. So because it gets dark here really early, so they also start returning really early, which doesn't give you a whole lot of time if you want to take it easy in Siliguri as well. Go there, take an easy pace over there, and come back here. You have to be very mindful of the time. But since I have my own vehicle for a couple of days, 
I can spend as much time over there. As you can see, the highways are pretty nice and smooth. And the locals were saying that the people here are relatively quite friendly. So you don't have to be scared of driving around late at night and so on and so forth. Uh, just be mindful of the, you know, the drug addicts and those go, don't go into those neighborhoods and stuff. But yeah, as long as you're on the main streets, main highway, there's still football up until midnight. Um, so I plan to be back around evening-ish hours, 7, 8 p.m. or whatever. Um, we should be there soon. It's not a super long ride. But I'm just driving very slow at like 40, 45 kilometers. So to just enjoy, enjoy the ride and take in the views. looks like tea plantations out here and as you can hear this is the army area so like super pin drop silence so we're gonna see a lot of tea plantations along this route so perhaps we're gonna end up at a tea estate up ahead we have uh, 33 kilometers to get to Mirik Alright, so we are 29 kilometers from Mirik. We are right now at Garidhura. That's the entrance to get to Mirik. And there's this Pashupati Fatak, which is actually one of the entrances into Nepal. So Pashupati Nagar area is where you're gonna enter. Uh, you can walk around the market and then before the end of day, you have to come back to the India side. So for Indians, it's very straightforward to get there if you have the valid IDs, you don't need visa or anything, uh, not even a passport, just the Indian government authorized IDs and you'll be fine. But I'm not going there, I'm going only to Mirik and then coming back. So this is a really cool uh, spot for pictures and selfies um, and not enough traffic on the road either so you can take your time. stop by for a quick breather and to take in the view so we have already started the hill climb similar serpentine roads as they were in Mount Abu and you see the view down there there's town there's flowing water lush greenery all around and this is the kind of route we are following and the vegetation is so dense that it's drizzling but for the most part it doesn't fall down all the way down to you the trees are stopping it so you have a free rain cover for the most part of the route we still have 19 odd kilometers to go and a lot of monkeys along this route so not gonna stay here too long let's keep driving and get to Mirik So finally at 2.30 p.m. made it to Sumendu Lake, also colloquially known as the Mirik Lake. And there was one guy explaining, so there is this taxi stand right here. So if you come from Siliguri or want to go to Siliguri using shared taxi, this is where you, are, you find it and there is also a booking counter there. So he was explaining you could go walk along there, you're going to walk along these pine trees, you can do boating if you want, there is an Isle of Mirik sign there. So it's a nice walking route around, so let's go walk around. and. Take in the views, enjoy the sunshine, maybe grab something local to eat afterwards. This is an amazing view. There is a bridge over here that is actually outside the Mirik Garden. You can go from here or go from inside either way. So the staff told me you don't necessarily need to buy a ticket to go to the park. So I'm here. Behind me is the lake. That's the entire pine forest. You can walk around and locals okay. mentioned there is also a monastery over there. So like one of the two iconic spots you can check out while you're in Mirik. So let's enjoy a peaceful walk in the pine forest and then head to the monastery and before that I'll walk around these shops to try and see if I can grab some organic tea from here because there is a lot of tea plantation around.
This is so peaceful out here in the trees there are all birds singing out there there are youngsters boating and making funny jokes and that's the Mirich town lots of as you can see like it's a hilly region so lots it's going up that way and the mist and the clouds are settling in because it's a monsoon season it's super super peaceful out here really enjoying it 10 on 10 recommended if you want to come here rent a scooty bike car whatever rent it yourself grab a sharing cab but it's definitely worth checking out and you know spending time out here met a really cool local couple um, they were 30 kilometers away from here so um, kind of locals from around town and some other locals walking around so people here are really nice and cool and um, the locals that I met afterwards walking they mentioned there is a dam out there and then the local hut so some street vendors selling some stuff let's take a quick view Yes, they are mostly clothes, but anyways, let's check it out while we're here. And then we head back across the bridge to the other side, check out something to eat and grab some local tea leaves from here. It was an interesting restaurant, um, budget friendly and had a Tibetan thukpa for the first time and I haven't been to Tibet so can't really tell how authentic it was but it was very delicious. It was like soup with some noodles and veggies so it was pretty good. And the tea shops around are all selling Darjeeling tea which is ironic. I thought they would sell Mirik local tea here as I'm in Mirik. There are a lot of tea estates around but if I had to grab uh, Darjeeling tea I might as well go to Darjeeling which I'm going anyway in the next vlog and grab it directly from there. So we're gonna grab the scooty and head over to the monastery now spend some time there although the clouds are very very low now but before I wrap up this log and start heading back that's gonna be my last stop for the day so let's go spend some time in the monastery if it's still open So this monastery behind me is a very peaceful place, uh, it's a residential complex, the monks stay here, so while I was inside they were praying, so couldn't really go all the way inside the main monastery, but it's very nice and now uh, two sumo full of tourists came over, so I enjoyed the peaceful side and then you have the view of the valley from around the campus, so it's good to spend some time here. Anyway, gonna wrap up this vlog and start heading back, probably it's gonna take two, two and a half hours depending on the speed that I take and if I find something interesting to stop by. And the tea shop people said that uh, there is no local tea being processed out here. There's only Darjeeling tea around. So I don't get the logic, but apparently that's the concept here. So we're gonna grab some tea from Darjeeling uh, in the next vlog. Anyway, until then, this is the Rustic Wonder signing off. See you again the next time.